Welcome to our online service, everyone. It's good to see you. Our service is about to begin in just a few minutes, but I'm Pastor Randy, and I'm here to welcome you with... Corone. Back again for another week. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Corone, we're going to have an exciting service, and uh, I'm glad everyone has joined us. We've got... Uh, uh, awesome group of people who are joining us online live simulcast on our site newlifebrampton.online.church i know there's also people who are tuning in each week on facebook and yep. on YouTube as yep. well. And so welcome to all of you. Uh, you know, the thing I like about our online site is, uh, is the live chat that's going on during yes. that. Yes, it's, uh, it's, I want to use the word hopping. Yeah. Um, but you always see, you always see familiar faces, you know, people who are just, you know, kind of popping in and saying hi. So occasionally the person who doesn't really know what's happening, they're like, oh, well, I'm involved. Yep. You know, here's a chat. <laughs> uh, but it's always, there's always something happening there and people are always talking. And especially, yeah. you know, now when you're not able to have that, you know, pre-service, you know, catch up conversation or after. Which our church is famous for. Which people I'm love you, to, love to, uh, <laughs> to get together after, to before and after. Half, before and after yeah. the service. And so it's nice to have. I'm glad that those of you who are come early to say hi to one another, that's mm. important. Encourage one another. Uh, wish each other a Merry Christmas. Yes. I don't think it's too early to do that. No, it's uh, definitely In fact, not. we are only or less than two weeks away. Like we're a week and a bit away yes. from Christmas. Yeah, just over a week. Yeah. And I'm so. very excited. I know it's a very different Christmas for everyone. Yep. But but it is Christmas nonetheless, and That's the meaning right. of the season doesn't change. That's right. It's all about Jesus, and yeah. we've had some uh, great services. Of course, the service is live simulcast mm -hmm. at uh, 9.30 and 11.15 on our site, newlifebrampton.online.church. Of course, available anytime uh, on Facebook and YouTube. Yes. Uh, and we want you to leave comments and uh, let us know that you're there. So if you're watching on Facebook, we'd love to see your face. Yes. So leave a comment. Stay active and engaged and, yep. you know, yep. keep in contact with us. And I just wanted to also let you know that you guys can also invite your friends and family. Mm. It is just a share button away. So when you're watching, you know, maybe even after after the broadcast, it's not so live, you can just, you know, click that share button and sure. send a message, share a message with somebody close sure. to you. I think they call it social media for a reason. Oh, of course. So you have to be social, you share be it with social. people. And so if, you, if you're uh, getting something out of the worship and out of the word, uh, share it with others so that they will see it in their feeds and, yeah. uh, and it'll be a blessing to them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, as we come up to Christmas, that also reminds me that we're coming close to the new year as well. Yes, I, I don't know about you, but I feel like as time goes on, it's getting like exponentially faster <laughs> yeah. yeah well you'll find that the older you get i feel like time continues to go faster okay, as well maybe so. i'm just getting into the uh the the i don't know old i don't know no no I mean, no you, not yet I don't my know. daughter says you, you're never old until you're like a hundred or something like that oh, okay. and so then well, you can then call yourself old i think uh, we're both pretty okay yeah. yeah so yeah i think <laughs> it's it's all a part of how you feel and yes. and uh uh, and just keeping a, a young attitude, but yeah. you know, I do understand what you're saying. Yeah. Time seems to go faster sometimes, yes, it does. Yes, and so. Uh, but we're coming up on the new year. One of the things I love about the first service in the new year mm. is people wishing each other a happy new year. Yes, uh, and yes, so, it is. And yeah. it's just it's the feeling of merriment. It's it's. I know a lot of people say you know New Year, New Me. Yeah. There's something refreshing about the physical act of saying you know Happy New Year. And knowing that you get that restart, you get yep. that fresh start, and yep. it'll be especially sweet, I think, this year. Yeah, and I know uh, Pastor Bob's working on a special uh, new series for for that uh, for the new year, and uh, we want to give you an opportunity to wish mm -hmm. people uh, a happy new year, like you would if you were in person. And I wanted you to send in your just a short ten second video saying "Happy New Year." You can be creative about it. You can do it by yourself. You can do it with with a group in your household, and uh, just email it to me, mm -hmm. Pastor Randy at newlifebrampton.ca. CA. And if you send me that email uh, by the 27th, the Sunday before uh, New Year's, we'll get that into our first service of the new year. And so uh, sending those videos, make wishing it, people. Make it you. Yeah. Make it fun. Make it exciting. You know, you don't just have to go say, you know, Happy New Year. But if that's you, do it. Sure. But show your personality. Show your spirit. Show what you're doing now that you can't do it in church, right? You can't turn to somebody and say Happy New Year. 
express that express that over video express, express it. how you feel yeah express yourself we'd love to see uh, we'd love to see your face yes. and hear you say happy new year exactly. and uh, and to wish you a happy new year as well so that's going to be coming up first sunday of uh, of the new year mm -hmm. and so we invite you to participate in that well we had an incredible service last week Blake Davison was our guest speaker uh, delivered a powerful message from his story of his mom mm -hmm. Uh, on just peace and forgiveness. Did yeah. you catch uh, that? Yeah, and you want to, it's, it's funny. I Those are two things, not that I've struggled with them, but I feel that it's been kind of a personal journey for me, mm -hmm. even even recently. Um, and, and I, this, sorry to yeah. kind of go off on a tangent, but I feel at this time more than any time, I feel a lot of people are shorter. Yep. You know, people are not as patient. People are frustrated. And even from that level right up to peace within yourself and forgiveness within yourself those are concepts that i feel are so 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 important yeah that's so true i mean yeah. and i think we need to be aware of that just show some extra uh, grace to people yeah. because uh, yeah i think people you're right people have been short and we yeah. just want to uh uh acknowledge that uh they need our forgiveness uh, and and so we're going through these processes the gifts of, of christmas the uh the hope and yeah. uh and the peace and uh, so this week pastor bob's gonna be talking about joy yes <laughs> i grabbed this uh, decoration yes. that i saw around yeah. the church that that's perfect for this week and uh and so i want to hear what he has to say about real joy yes. uh that uh uh, the Lord gives to us um, and we'll come back here after the service and yes. and talk a little bit uh, about that listen getting ready for Christmas I thought it'd be kind of fun as we just a few minutes away to uh, play a game together Are you up for that okay yes. okay uh, I it, hope I win okay. behind you yeah. <laughs> behind okay. you is a is a Christmas stocking okay okay and uh, i just went and looked up a vocab list for a bunch of uh, don't peek yet uh for uh a bunch of words that describe christmas okay, okay? so i thought i give ourselves 30 seconds i'll go first so that you can see how the game is played okay. and i want you to try to guess the word I'm, i can't say the word oh okay. i can't okay. say the word okay. but i'm going to um, um but i'll try to get you by describing the word to to say the word that is on here i'll put 30 seconds on, on the, the clock okay. once the uh once i once i kind of start my my clues here okay this is the worst uh, decision i'm very competitive <laughs> i'm extremely okay. competitive and we'll okay. see how many we can get here okay all let's right see. so okay. so this is uh, they they appeared to the shepherds uh, oh oh the okay so are you talking yeah. about the star the angels the angel, angel. angel. Okay, angel. Okay, okay that's right angel. Angel. uh and angel. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, and they lay Jesus in a manger. Excellent. A manger? Okay. All right. And okay. Uh, some people like this. Some people don't. It's a, uh, a kind of dessert. It's and fruit cake? Is it yeah, fruit cake. cake. Oh, okay. you got it. Okay, I got it. Okay, okay. And oh, that was time. That was time. All okay. right. But we got three. Right? You got three. You got yes, three. Okay, got so three. you can try it on me now. Okay, okay. And maybe we'll get a chance to play this again. Okay. okay, let's hope that I'm nearly as good as you are with the <laughs> clues. Okay, tell me when the timer's going. Okay, you, I'll wait till you pull you'll wait till start. I pull one out? Until you okay. start. All right, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Go. Okay, ooh, um, it's a very exciting event that sometimes happens at Christmas and um, you go across the stage. Oh, uh, uh, like a pageant or like a, yeah, okay. Pageant. Wow. That, I, I don't think I would have gotten that one. Okay. Number two. Ooh. Uh, people usually hang these on their doors in the Christmas oh, season. Oh, like a wreath. A Christmas a wreath. wreath. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, we're so good. Okay. Um, oh, there were three of these. Oh. oh. And you would have gotten that one too. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I got two there. You got two. All you got right. Two. All right. Uh, you know, yeah, this was this was fun. There's like, a, there were so many words. Like I just I quickly printed a list and I cut them up and threw them in here. So I did have a little peek on yes, that. That's okay, maybe why that's true. I think but I did I see the I still won. Yeah, I still <laughs> have <won>. three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely awesome. very competitive. <laughs> Listen, uh, we're about to head into service in just a, a, a minute, but uh, you know this. 
this uh, topic of joy, you know, people are, are finding it hard to have joy yes. because of the circumstances. But uh, uh, Pastor Bob is going to talk about real biblical joy and how you can have joy. So if you saying, how can I have joy in the season when, when, you know, they're telling me not even to get together with people. Yeah. Um, Pastor Bob's going to explain that. So uh, I'm looking forward to that service, to the service day, to the word. Yeah. And then you and I will come back and talk about his main yes. points uh, okay. just for a, a couple of minutes and how they can apply and, and uh, how you can download the... Uh, the PDF the to guide. to uh, to guide to to you know putting this into your life and yep. and, and living it out. Uh, I want you to know that we love you. We're glad that you're with us today. There are people ready to pray for you during our live simulcast. The pastors are online, ready to pray for you. We've always got a prayer team. Yes. That prayer is, warriors. Prayer warriors. That, them, yeah. yeah. And there's a great group of 30 or so people that have mm -hmm. committed themselves to prayer. And on the homepage of our website, you can sign up and they would be happy to uh, to pray for you mm -hmm. for any qu requests that you might have. So please reach out. Please yeah. reach out via email, through chat, uh, through any means. Yeah. Because we're always here for you. That's right. Yeah. And, and right now, just as the service is about to begin, might be a great time to head over to the website, newlifebrampton.ca and, uh, and give. We want to thank you for giving. Uh, I know there's families that need your help when the church is able to come alongside some families. And, and some of you have just been so generous in saying, how can I be a blessing? So thank you for, for doing that, uh, being a blessing to our missions partners. We want to continue to support yes. them. And you can yeah. give also through Interact. Yes, yes, e-transfer. It's probably one of the easiest ways and the way that we've gotten used to doing it now. Yeah, and that is give at newlifebrampton.ca is the email that you uh, send that to. So so thank you for your support and thank you for giving. And uh, we're going to head into our service, yeah. enjoy some uh, some songs together, and then uh, we'll catch you right back here afterwards. Catch you right back here. See you soon. Take care.
only king forever Almighty God, we lift you higher You are the only king forever Forevermore You are victorious You are the only king forever Almighty God, we lift you higher You are the only king forever Forevermore You are victorious
ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. If you turn mourning to dancing, you give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only service today. We're so glad that you're with us. We're going to go back into our service in just a moment for another song of worship and uh, then the preaching of God's Word. We want to say thank you for uh, remembering the church in your tithes and your offerings. Your gifts are helping us to be here, uh, bringing a message of, of hope and uh, just reminding people that, uh, that Jesus loves them and introducing them to a walk with Christ. And so Thank you for doing that. You're able enabling us to give to our missions partners all around the world and making a difference in that way, uh, able to help those in our community through our benevolence fund. So thank you for your generosity in giving to the work of God. You can give on our website, newlifebrampton.ca. Just select give, and you can do that safe and securely on our website. You can also give through Interact and send your gift to the email give at newlifebrampton.ca. Well, we're going to enjoy another song of worship and then the preaching of God's word. So let's go back into our service. Before you set the edge of time, foundation of the earth and sky, you saw it all and said that it was good. You saw the joy before your eyes. You knew that you would give your life. You saw it all and said that it was good. So behold, behold the one I love has come. Behold, behold the one a king has come. The heavens wore, the earth stood still. Final breath, he tore the veil. The angels sing, Holy is his name. He did death, he broke the grave. I hope he turned the lost I saved. I lift a voice in never ending praise. Behold, behold the one. I love his come Behold, behold the one our King has come Behold, behold the one our love has come Behold, behold the one our King has come Welcome, friends. Thanks for joining us on this third Sunday of Advent. And I know some of you have told me that you are lighting it ca candles at home since we're not able to do that. And, and if you are, then you know this Sunday is all about joy. It, and usually today we would read that scripture from Luke chapter 2. And 
we'd read the words of the angel to the shepherds, terrified on the side of the hill when they appeared, where she said, he said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Good news, great joy for all people. What, what incredible words those are. And if, if ever there was a Christmas season, a season in my lifetime when people truly needed to experience joy, it's right now. It seems as though no matter where I go, I find people without the spirit of Christmas, without the joy of the season. And no doubt it's the same for you that, that because of some of the announcements that have recently been made about us needing to celebrate with less, us choosing to, to gather only with people who live in our own households and so we won't see our, our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our children. I, 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 I think that's hard on us. I think that's creating a lot of anxiety in our personal lives, especially if you're someone like myself who's been trying very hard to live inside the rules so we could flatten the curve. And so how, how, after all of that, after all we have been going through, are we expected on this Sunday morning to have joy? And as I was thinking about that, I was reminded of a story Max Lucado told many years ago of his friend Jerry. He writes, Jerry has told, taught me so many things about joy. Jerry is 78 years old and he regularly shoots his age on the golf course. If ever I do that, Max writes, I'd have to live to be 100. But Jerry's wife, Ginger, battles Parkinson's disease. And so what should have been a wonderful season of retirement has been marred by multiple hospital stays, medication, and struggle. That there are many days she can't keep her balance, and so Jerry has to be right there at her side. And yet Jerry never complains. He always has a smile and a joke, and he relentlessly beats me in golf. One morning I asked Jerry his secret, and he said, Every morning Ginger and I sit together in our devotions, and, and we sing a hymn. I say, Ginger, what song would you like to sing? And she always says, Count your many blessings. And so we sing. And when we get to that line where it says, Name them one by one, we do just that. We stop singing, and we start naming our many blessings. And when we're through, recognizing the truth of those many, many blessings does so much more to relieve her pain and my anxiety than any of the meds do. That's why we're able to smile every day. It's why we're able to live with joy. And honestly, I'm inspired by people like that. I have some friends who've walked through some terrible roads in, in the last few years and one in more recent days. And, and when I'm together with them and I see their faith and I see their hope and I sometimes even see their joy in the midst of those difficult moments, it, it, it inspires me. And so I want to talk to you this morning about finding Christmas joy in the midst of a lockdown. And I want to take you to a text in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. And we'll read it together in just a moment. But you go ahead and start trying to find it in your Bible or your device. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about this letter before I started to read it. Because so often we have this mistaken notion that Christians in the first century had it easy. Or, or that they had it good. That they walked around with halos over their head and didn't experience any of the pain, any of the grief, any of the struggles that, that we do. And so, so, so just to clarify, the book of 1 Peter was written to refugees, to exiles. Peter calls them strangers in the world. People who've been scattered from their home to other places. The unknown and strange and unfriendly places. These were Christians who had literally fled for their lives. And they left behind their families in that time and era, which, which would have likely meant they would never see them again. They, they walked away from everything that they knew. They were having to start over, and sometimes they had to do it more than once. 
And it wasn't like they could get a transfer from one office to another regional office of the main place they had worked at. They had to start new businesses, find new jobs, find new homes, make new friends in a culture and a, a country with new languages and customs in a place where, yes, everybody spoke Greek just like in this day. Most people speak English, but they also spoke another language so they could speak about you right in front of you without you knowing what it was that they were saying. They were trying to start their lives while carrying the fear about what just had happened and anxiety over what might go on in the future and, and uncertain about, well, literally everything. In the midst of all of that, Peter dictates this letter. He sends it to them and it's like an old school Christmas letter where we used to open them up and inside would be a newsletter and you would get caught up on, on how your friends are or what's going on or like a modern day email that's been CC'd or BCC'd or uh, an Instagram post or, or a Facebook message that's sent to your friends and your family so they know where you are. And what's in, incredible to me is that what Peter writes to this group of people, these people that he loves, these people that he knows, beginning in the third verse, he says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we've been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change or decay. And through your faith... God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him, though you've never seen him. Though you don't see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with glorious, inexpressible joy. In the midst of impossible moments, in the midst of a season that was rife with disappointment, discouragement, and pain, Paul, Peter writes to his friends and he said, you live with great expectation, an expectation that had nothing to do, I should add, with their current circumstances or some kind of perceived opportunity that they were about to find in the next community. And he challenges them in the midst of this impossible moment, and this is powerful to me, he commands them to be truly glad because of the incredible joy they were going to experience, not in the immediate future, I might add. Then he says something that really boggles my mind. Because he says, in spite of where they are, in spite of what they had walked through, in spite of what their prospects were or were not in the near future, they lived with glorious, inexpressible joy. And as I read that this past week, I, I asked myself, how how was that possible? How, how is it possible that in the midst of loneliness and persecution and trial and trouble, how is it possible that they had joy? Was Peter just making that line up? And of course, the answer to that is no. The people would have rejected the letter if Peter was writing something that they knew wasn't true. So they had glorious, inexpressible joy. And as I thought about that, I, I came up with this idea that we need to talk about the joy of Christmas. We need to, to understand that they understood something different about joy than maybe we do. It's, it, it's a kind of joy, Christian joy, Christmas joy that I'll call it this morning is wildly different from the joy the rest of the world experiences because what the rest of the world experiences is what we call contingent joy. Contingent joy is the kind of joy that, that, that you see on the media. It's the, it's the kind of joy you get when you get a new car, when you buy a new house, when you shop a certain brand of clothing, or as the media tells us, when you uh, use a certain toothpaste or deodorant. Contingent joy says when the world is right, when the circumstances are good. When I graduate from high school or get through college, when I get the job of my dreams or marry Mr. or Mrs. Wright, when I become a parent or a, a grandparent or when the kids finally leave home, 
or I reach retirement or I begin to be pain free then when the, those circumstances are met then I'll have joy Joy, as the world understands it, is always contingent on something happening. It is why so many in our world right now are angry and frustrated because the things they need to be happy have been taken from them. And so joy is impossible. But the message the angels gave 2,000 years ago to the shepherds in the fields of good news of great joy for all people had nothing to do with contingent joy. It wasn't that the world as they knew it was about to become perfect or better. When the, when the shepherds woke up the next morning on Christmas morning after this powerful Christmas Eve encounter, they were still shepherds. The lowest caste of people in their working society, minimum wage workers with no real hope of advancement. The Romans were still in charge. They were still oppressing innocent people like them, demanding ever higher taxes. A census was still being taken. Being taken. The town was still being overrun by people. And no doubt they were still being asked to stay out in the fields all night so that their friends and relatives could come and sleep in their beds. So what was this Christmas joy all about? And more importantly, where does that Christmas joy come from that we're supposed to be living with right now? And I'm so glad that you asked that question because that's what Peter's trying to tell us about. Firstly, he says that, that Christmas joy or Christian joy comes from knowing and remembering what we have received from God. And I, I love this idea that Peter talks about that we live with great expectation or with a living hope. What a wonderful picture for the Christmas season. Living with expectation like children all through this month of December waiting and anticipating that moment when Christmas will finally roll around. But of course it requires us to ask the question, what is it that they were looking forward to? What is it that they were expecting that was the cause of this incredible joy? Because all of us have had a Christmas moment, I suspect, where we or our children or an unnamed spouse or a family member have been disappointed and expressed that disappointment about something that they found under the tree. But Peter says we live with great expectation and that our hopes will not be disappointed. And when he said that, he was talking about the fact that because of what Jesus has done for us, because he came for us on that first Christmas morning, we have received an eternal relationship with God. A relationship that we are promised will continue throughout all of eternity, that one day will lead us to a, a place in the presence of God in heaven. And that's what we're expecting. It's our hope. And, and I know we have to be careful with the word hope because hope right now is not the hope of the Bible. The hope of the Bible is a certainty, whereas the hope of the world right now is just a wish. And honestly, it blows my mind that we have this incredible hope that one day we will spend forever with God. It's a hope that enables me, Bob, who is, who is in every respect uh, nobody, uh, really someone who is unworthy in my own merits to, of anything that God has promised to come boldly. How amazing is that for me to be able to come boldly into the presence of God and at, at any time in the moment or day without having to somehow make up for the things I've done wrong, without having to bring some kind of gifts to, to bribe God, to make him look favorably upon me, uh, but instead I can just come and tell him what's going on in my heart and my mind. And not only that, in this moment, we who've accepted and responded to what Jesus have, have done for us, we live with this promise that we've been accepted into God's family, that we are sons and daughters of God, and that one day we will spend forever with our Father in heaven, and that we're destined to receive an, an inheritance, that there's no way that we have done anything to earn but a reward that will last forever and forever and forever, that God says is yours and God says is mine. In essence, we have incredible joy this morning because we know we have gained something that is priceless and eternal because of Jesus Christ. Secondly, I want to say that Christmas joy comes from seeing our earthly losses and disappointments for what they truly are. And I want to be careful because I know, I know how difficult it is to lose things and I know how disappointed we are in so many aspects of our lives. But Christians, in the midst of Christmas, see our losses as temporary and yet purposeful. 
And I have to admit, when I was preparing this message and I got to verse 6, it kind of took me off guard when Peter said, so be truly glad. In the midst of the trial, in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the testing of our faith, in the midst of moments when, it, when it's hard to see what lies ahead, be truly glad. But, but the reason that he tells us that we can be glad is because the trials are short term, but the rewards of living through them are forever, that God allows these moments of testing of faith to strengthen our faith and to bring great reward to us. In other words, the struggles that we go through right now have an eternal purpose and carry with them long-term rewards that far outweigh the suffering and the loss that we're experiencing. When I think about those things, and I think about the people who received this letter and the, the fact that a few years from this moment, the writing of this letter, Peter himself would be arrested and executed in Rome, and he went willingly and joyfully. He did that because he knew that whatever he lost in this life was small compared to what he was about to, to gain. They, 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 he knew that there was nothing that was here that could rob him of what God had promised him there. And so he went to that execution joyfully and with peace. That's why Paul and Silas could sing in prison in the Philippian jail. It's why he, Paul could turn around and write to the church of Philippi who were experiencing the same kind of trouble that he did and have a, a letter that was full of words like rejoice. Again, I say to you, rejoice. It's why two weeks ago I was able to encourage my friend Blake, whom you met last Sunday, who is walking through the nightmare of, ha of having lost a daughter at 32 years of age. Why I could encourage him to have faith. To keep going. Because everything we go through in this moment is not forever. It's purposeful. And it will be rewarded. That's why Peter said, be truly glad. And friend, Christmas joy, Christian joy, stays with us in trouble because we remember that truth. It's not contingent on anything it, that we experience here and now. It is based truly on what is eternal and what, is, what will last. That's why the, the old songwriter could write, the world didn't give it to me, the world can't take it away, this happy face that I'm wearing. You know, Jesus put it there to stay. The world didn't give it to me, and it can never take it away. Lastly, Chris, Christian joy, Christmas joy, comes from anchoring our hope, our peace, our joy, in the expectation that, in, in, and our expectations, sorry, in Jesus Christ. Verse 8 says, you love him even though you've never seen him. Though you don't, do not see him right now, you trust him. And you rejoice with glorious, inexpressible joy. Christmas joy is not tied to our experiences or our emotions. It's not tied to what the government does or does not do. It's not tied to what we, we, we've received or how we're being treated or who'll be able to come over for Christmas. Christian joy is not contingent on anything in this world. It is anchored in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And as long as we have Jesus, we can have joy. As long as that relationship with Jesus is strong and good and healthy, our joy is secure and strong along with it. And since no one can take away our relationship with Jesus Christ and the hope uh, that he has promised us and, or what he has done for us, then no one can rob us of the joy that we have. Not your boss, not your spouse, not your kids, not anyone. And friend, here's the thing. The more deeply we are connected to Jesus, the more time we spend with him and his word, especially in moments like this, the more we are able to see his will taking place in our lives and the more we will have joy. So friends, be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Heavenly Father, I, I pray for my friends who are watching online with me today. And Lord, I ask that you will help them in the midst of whatever is going on in their lives to know that there is more, that you have planned more for them than what they see right now. Lord, I do pray that today they would be full of hope. They would have peace about this moment that you would fill their hearts with a sense of inexpressible joy because of what you've done for them 
and for, because of what you have promised to give them in the future. Lord, cover us, Lord, and watch over us, I pray in Jesus' name. Bring it all to peace, the storm surrounding me, let it break at your name and still, call the sea to still, the raging me to still, let it break at your name, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, and Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Bones, call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. Now we'll praise and Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear and Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. No, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Silence, fear, Jesus, Jesus. Darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. In your name is the light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. In your name is the light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, and Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive that the shadows can't your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble. Jesus. 
Welcome back, everyone. Wow, what an incredible uh, message. Yes. Um, great biblical insights on uh, joy. And, uh, you know, I think the thing that I really loved right off the start was that story um, about the guy named Jerry, Jerry. and take care of his of his uh, wife and how they would sing that song, Count Your Blessings. Yes. Yeah, yes. I remember that song uh, and kind of grew up on that song. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that's an important aspect for us to do uh, is to count our blessings. A hundred percent. And I, I know that I have been doing it. Um, even in our conversations, when, mm. when I speak to you, you have a spirit of just of gratefulness all the time. And it's it's an important thing that we, <laughs> we do need to feed. It's something yeah. that we need to feed. That's right. And we feed it by counting our many blessings. Yeah. Even at, you know, times like these where maybe the balance of what you believe are blessings uh, yeah. versus otherwise might be a little bit off. It's easy to focus on the it's negative very, things. Very, very easy. In fact, if you're watching, I'd love to see you to put down what your blessings are, yeah. something that you feel blessed about. Is there something you feel blessed about? Yes. Um, there's, well, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to get that off the bat, but I'm, I'm grateful for my family. Yeah. I'm very thankful for my family. Um, Amen. I, I'm also thankful for just getting up in the morning, opening my eyes, having a bed that I sleep on, having a roof over my head, and knowing that I don't have to worry about where my next meal comes yeah, from. Yeah, there's a lot of things. That's, that's also something else. We can thank God what for. About, that, what about you? Well, you know, uh, I love, of course, my family. My wife, Esther, mm-hmm. uh, my kids uh, are, are great blessings. My church family yes. is a great blessing. I get encouraged by my church family, and I'm thankful to have them in my life. Um, and so, yeah, there's many things to count our blessings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd love to hear those things that you're counting uh, as a blessing as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that text in First Peter chapter 1, uh, you know, that they would live with great expectation, not just, not because life was tough there yes. then as well, but they were thinking about what the future had yes. and keeping their eyes on, on Christ. And, and so we want you to dive deeper into that this week. I want you to have that opportunity to talk with family and, and maybe call a friend and, and uh, talk about joy and encourage each other. And so we've prepared this PDF. Yes. It's in the notes, and so you can download it. Just click on there and download some questions, uh, some resources to help you uh, focus on this uh, important subject and, yeah. and have more joy in your life, and real joy. It's, really, it's, it's, a, it's a free guide. It's, it's something that... I think is very valuable. Yeah. Um, and it's free, and it's something that you're getting getting even more than you'd normally get out of this message. So it kind of makes you deep dive within yourself and within yeah. your own relationship with Christ, and and kind of asks you different questions, mm-hmm. and you know it gives more context and and more understanding at the sure. end of the day. Sure. Yeah, that's right. Learning. I mean, so often I find that I will, you know, I can listen to a message and yeah. then. I can forget about it, yes. but unless I take the opportunity at some point yes. and go a little deeper myself, uh, then it helps me it stick in my life yeah. and apply it to my life. So it's, a, it's an application guide. Uh, if you can take one thing away from it and help your life be more joyful, that's going to be a positive thing. I, I love the points he had, you know, compared, uh, you know, the uh, contingent joy versus, you know, Christmas joy. Yes. You know, that that is so true. We often, yeah. you know let things steal our joy because their it's our joy was contingent on yes, something yes and it, it i mean it goes hand in hand with a, all of these sermons this entire uh series because yep. all of these things this you know real joy yeah versus this you know contingent joy it's like opening up the thing you wanted at the end of the year versus the safety and and security and joy and knowing yep. that you are like you are wrapped in the love of god yep. basically and I mean, the whole theme of being wrapped and, you know, opening <laughs> presents. I'm a poet. There but, you go. Uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, it, it's such an important that, you know, these two different types of joy. Yeah. Um, because we're really seeing this now. And that's why a lot of people might not be at their happiest. It's because we're starting to, to really look and reflect, look on the inside and see. Maybe, you know, these things we were distracted by. Mm-hmm. When we weren't focused on this, it, they weren't bringing me joy. So what is it that that makes me joyful? Yeah. And, and, and you know, that, that you keep your eyes on eternal things and keeping your eyes on God. You can't lose that, yes. you know, because the world didn't give that to you. Yeah. And you keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Uh, and the world can't take that away because mm-hmm. you, they can't take away Jesus. They, yes. The world can take away a lot of things, um, and but they can't uh, take away 
you know, no, Jesus from you. They can't. Um, and so, you know, just that that point, keeping your eyes, Him, the anchor of our yeah. hope. He's the anchor yes. of our peace. He's the anchor of our joy. Uh, and so, perhaps that's uh, you were listening to that message today, and you thought, you know what? Yeah, my joy. Uh, I haven't been joyful lately because it's been based on temporary things, uh, contingent on things that have been taken away from me, uh, gathering with people, uh, being able to have the freedom to go out and go uh, and do things. And so, and that's been taken away. But uh, I want to challenge you today. If you've never done done it before, invite Jesus into your life and uh, put your your hope and your joy, your peace in Him. And we want to help you with that. I invite you just uh, to, right after this video, just to stop and, and pray to God simple prayer it doesn't have to be flowery just say to him god i need you and he will hear that prayer i believe that and he will come into your life tell him that you need him and that you believe that jesus christ is the son of god who came to save you as that baby who grew into a man who died on the cross for your sins and uh, invite him into your life and we'd love to help you uh, with that and so if, if you're at that place and you're ready to take a step with jesus and and ask him to give you joy um, I invite you to send me an email, Pastor Randy at newlifebrampton.ca, and uh, just let me know that uh, you're at that point in your life. I'd love to be able to send you some resources, uh, you know, answer questions that you might have about uh, going further in Jesus Christ. We are here to serve you, and uh, you are loved. And so, have a great week, everyone. Amen. Yes, yeah, have a great uh, week. Yeah, and reach out, and uh, we will see you next Sunday. Yes, take care. Stay safe.